Hey everybody, it's Alex from Heavy New York. We are back at the oh so comfortable couch in the beautiful St. Vitus basement. And today we are here with yet another Cascadian doom metal band. We are here with Witch Mountain. Thank you all for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's so awesome to have you here. Your latest self-titled record is absolutely awesome. How was the recording for it and everything? It was great because it was with Billy Anderson, who's produced many records for us, and uh, all the sessions for this record were done with him, and everything we've recorded with Kayla, uh, aside from one comp track, I think has been with Billy. So, yeah. Oh, well. I had a question actually for you, Kayla, because I know that this is your first record with the band. So, did you like have to adjust your singing style to sort of fit like a Witch Mountain formula, or did Witch Mountain kind of want you to bring in your own style to the band? Uh, I brought my own style, I think. Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't really think about um, trying to fit any particular style like that that the other singer had or anything like that. Um, I just brought my own style and um, yeah. yeah we wanted her because we like what she does that's awesome that's awesome so needless to say this is like not exactly sort of picking up where Witch Mountain left off after the previous record this is like a completely new start for the band right yeah I mean that's why it's the self-titled album I think it's meant to feel a new beginning although I think it's still recognizably the same band because it's still Rob's songwriting but, yeah. but it's sort of the new improved, like, best yet, yeah. Witch Mountain. Yeah, which is awesome. Now, I saw, like, a lot of different elements of Witch Mountain, from, like, classic rock elements to doom metal elements. Did you guys have, like, a preconceived idea for this record coming in with the new vocalist, or was there any sort of improvising involved? I don't think we ever have a preconceived idea for any of our records. It's really just uh, about where we're at at that time and uh, what you know the music that's coming out of rob naturally i think you know lyrically that it might be different i would let kayla answer that as far as how you know that writing process went yeah well yeah, yeah. yeah. um no i didn't have any pre the, because the way that this album came together was we never really intended to record it as a full album until until we did i mean you know like we we did an ep we did a single and then we did an EP and then we were like oh let's just record a few more songs and we kind of just put it into an album so um, not this time around but uh, yeah yeah well as a did you like have to hear some of the music in order to come up with some lyrics or did maybe like you had like a lyrical concept and the band kind of wrote according to that oh um, well what what happens is Rob sends me some riff ideas and um, I write to them so I usually actually come up with a vocal melody first and then come up with lyrics that fit with that melody um, but you know it's different each time with each song sometimes I will come up with a uh, lyrics and a melody for like a chorus or whatever and send it to Rob and he'll right to that so um but yeah the majority of this album was rob sending me the riffs and me writing to that awesome now being that like there's i've noticed that like sometimes uh the tempo like varies throughout the song sometimes there's really fast parts some very aggressive parts and then there's very mellow parts did were you guys like feeling maybe different types of emotions in the process of writing any of these songs i mean i think that from the beginning there's always been some progressive elements in Witch Mountain where we'll have extra beats and odd time signatures and you know varying tempos and that's just always been part of the band because we all listen to so many different kinds of music um, you know emotionally again I would let Kayla speak to that mm -hmm. um, well I just hmm I mean I feel like there's not much control I I don't have much control over the tempo of the song obviously but um i think yeah i mean there has to be some kind of emotional shift when you're going from you know when you're slowing a song down and you're picking up the pace there's obviously going to be an emotional shift there 
Um, and our intention, I think, is, you know, to have that register for the audience as well. So. Absolutely. Now, from listening to your music, I was able to kind of obtain like a vibe and an emotion from listening to your music. And obviously for you guys, you guys are the artists behind it. But when you guys were in the studio making this music versus playing these songs live to share with an audience, is there maybe a different experience that you've had with those songs live versus in the studio? Well, certainly the songs develop a lot on the road. And I think we're, you know, this happens with every album, but I think on this tour we're going, wow, it'd be so cool to go back and re-record some of this stuff now that we've been playing it every night for a month. But uh, I think what I really like about the album experience as something separate it, is the layering. I mean, especially the many, many vocal harmonies that are on there. Are, and that's not something that we can reproduce live until we get to a point where we can clone Kayla 20 times. And mm -hmm. that's still a few years off, probably. I mean, if you guys were the first band to clone a member, that would be the, that's what we need now. That's the new thing in metal that we need. <laughs> yeah. Doom clones. Doom clones. I'm going to start a band to call it that. Now, being that on this album, you, I mean, there were songs that ranged from like four minutes to like 17 and a half minutes. How do you, do you know when a song is finished? Oh, um, that's a tough one. Cause like when we were writing Nighthawk, we just kept going and going and going. And I guess really the point is to not, as long as you've said what you have to say, like you, you don't need to say if you're doing extra or if you're saying more or if you've already made your point, but the song just keeps going and going and going, then you probably have written too much and need to cut back. But with Nighthawk in particular, um, that was a, a special circumstance because with that song, you know, it, it all did tie together really nicely. And um, yeah, we said what we needed to say by the end of the song. So um, yeah. Is there like a sir? Oh, no, I just I totally agree. And I we've been playing that song every night on tour and. I think there are definitely songs, you know, 15 minute long songs where people tune out at a certain point, but that doesn't happen with Nighthawk because there's so many movements to it and so many different shades and emotions that we it's you kind of take the listener on a roller coaster ride with that one. Whereas there are other bands that'll play a 15 minute song that's the same riff for 15 minutes and that's and there is a point to that and I get it, but that's not what that's not what we do. Uh yeah, I mean it it does turn some people away i've noticed like some people like see this song is 21 and a half minutes i'm skipping that one but i mean i've always thought that like maybe sometimes when people write a really long song that there is just a bunch of riffs or a bunch of beats or vocals that they just don't want to throw away it, it, was there like because you guys say so much with this record is there a lot that you may have left out or no i no i don't think i don't think so I mean, I think we're just inspired by, you know, like a song like um, e Echoes off Pink Floyd Metal or the side A of 2112. I mean, they're just like suites of music by classic artists, and I think that's what we're trying to do. Excellent. And uh, one final question I wanted to ask you is, as I mentioned before, like there's a lot of bands of that one would just call Doom style from the Cascadian area, whether it be Yob or Bellwitch or Isonortal or so many. I mean, for the style that you guys play, was there like kind of a scene, because you guys are from Oregon, so like, was there kind of like a scene that you guys have started in and worked well? There was no scene when we started because we were the first band in Portland to play doom metal. And before Witch Mountain existed, Rob was in a sludge-oriented band called Iomi Stubbs. But even Yob, uh, I mean, they were from Eugene, and they sent us their first demo in 2000. We'd been around for three years at that point, really? and we were so excited that there was another band in the state to play with, because prior to that, Witch Mountain played with rock bands and metal bands and punk bands, or the doom bands that would pass through town. So the first time High on Fire played in Portland, they played with us. The first time Electric Wizard played in Portland, they played with us and slept on my floor. And <laughs> we were, you know, we were the only band doing that. And it's totally different now. Now there's very much a scene in a community throughout, I mean, th 
throughout the world for this style of music. But when we first started, there was like one band in each state, and that was the circuit. Was Agaloc sort of in a similar scene as you guys? The maybe? very first Agaloc show was opening for Yob and Witch Mountain in 2003, and we did a show together, and it was a Pabst-sponsored Metal Thursday, and it was a dollar cover charge. And 150 people paid a dollar to see Yob and Witch Mountain and Agaloc. That is an awesome lineup. <laughs> Agaloc, please cool. come back. I mean, Agaloc had been around uh, prior to that, but they were recording. They were they had only done albums and hadn't played live yet. And I got this press release because I was writing for Pit and Terrorizer and other magazines at that time. And I got this press release talking about this legendary, enigmatic dark metal band from Portland called Agaloc. And I'm like, how is it possible that there's this infamous band that I've never heard of or seen before in my hometown so i just reached out to them and said hey let's do a show together and they said yes <laughs> that's awesome and we've been friends ever since that's awesome so uh, before we go i want to thank you guys so much for your time um you know you're doing this little run right now for the self-titled obviously it's a brand new record could we be expecting anything new from witch mountain that you're allowed to talk about um uh maybe i mean we're gonna probably start writing here soon so yeah but n nothing's recorded yet okay yeah yeah i mean this record's pretty fresh we're you know it's been out only since the end of may and we're on the tour supporting it right now but i think we're all gestating ideas for what will come next and that's pretty quick but we still probably have a lot of road work to do for this one too but i'm excited about touring and recording in the future just because it's all going so well I'd imagine since your style is so atmospheric that you can get a lot of inspiration from the road and stuff. Yeah, I mean, mainly for me, my inspiration just comes from life, you know, and not necessarily, life's kind of different when you're on the road. It's very, like, there's a set routine, you know, yeah. but, like, um, as far as, like, life experiences and relationships with other people, that's more where my... Um, influence and my inspiration comes from so uh yeah that's awesome yeah. and uh any more tours we could be expecting that nothing that we can talk about yet but we always come back yep mm -hmm. you're gonna tell me off the air when i stop rolling but thank you guys so much for your time everybody we are here with witch mountain pick up their latest self-titled record and we'll see you next time on heavy new york <laughs>